So now we're going to talk a bit about the literary history of fantasy. Uh, probably the art of telling stories and also tell supernatural stories is probably as old as mankind itself. Um, and as I said in the previous part, fantasy is a relatively modern genre. It has developed mostly since uh, the Second World War and onwards. But if we look back through the Western literary history, we can see where fantasy has borrowed elements uh, and taken inspiration from. And if we go as far back as to the earliest texts, uh, for instance, the Gilgamesh uh, epos or the ancient Greeks uh, and the Bible and books like that, uh, we can see some elements that are borrowed from that kind of literature. For instance, well, obviously the battle between good and evil um, is quite common trait in fantasy. Uh, the concept of a hero, uh, a great brave hero, <clears throat> the storytelling of <clears throat> how a hero grew up and become a hero is also quite common. Um, the kind of um, quite active gods who or goddesses who wanders the earth and sort of meddles in the affair of humans, which is common, for instance, in in um, <clears throat> the stories of the ancient Greek gods, is also quite common in, in fantasy. And if we move onwards in our literary history and, and come to the Middle Ages, uh, that's probably <clears throat> one of the main time periods for fantasy. Um, because as I mentioned before, a lot of, especially high fantasy, um, it depicts some kind of medieval culture. Uh, you can see it in the way people dress, in the weapon and armory, uh, the cooking, uh, the concept of knights, knighthood, honor, and, and influences like that. So probably the Middle Ages is <clears throat> uh, a very important time period for, for fantasy to, to develop. Uh, and also, if you look at the texts, um, the chivalrous uh, romances and, and, and hero stories, for instance, um, Nibelungenring, uh, mystery plays, you can see influences from these kind of texts. Um, and obviously a lot of, you know, Icelandic sagas, folklore, Celtic mythology, especially. Uh, there's even uh, a subgenre within, within fantasy today that is called Arthurian fantasy that only deals with the myths concerning King Arthur and the knights around the table and, and uh, stories like that. And also Tolkien was very much uh, well read in this kind of folklore and, and built his uh, stories and world upon um, the ideas in these texts. Uh, if we look at the age of reason and the age of enlightenment, uh, that was time periods not very much focused on supernatural uh, stuff, but more concerning philosophy, natural science, social criticism and, and areas like that. So it's not really an important time period for the development of fantasy. Uh, but still, if you if you look at one of the most famous texts from, from that time period, which is Gulliver's Travels, um, even though, as I learned when I went to school, um, it is a social satire upon the British society at the time. When I was a kid, I read it as a fairy tale. Uh, so it's it's even though it's meant to be social satire, it's really told with supernatural means. So I think that sort of shows that it's a natural way for us to communicate, to, to tell supernatural stories. And onwards, we're really fast forwarding to through, throughout history here. Um, we come to Romanticism in the end of the 18th century and onwards. Uh, and this is uh, sort of where it all happens for the fantasy genre. Uh, people were uh, very much interested in the supernatural and, and, and we saw characters like Dracula and Frankenstein uh, for the first time. Um, there was a lot of fairy tales, famous fairy tales, be, being written uh, in Germany. The Grimm brothers travelled around and gathered gather up folk tales. In Denmark, H.C. Anderson wrote his uh, very famous fairy tales. Uh, and in, in Oxford in England, uh, a mathematician um, called Lewis Carroll wrote Alice in Wonderland, etc. Uh, so a lot of fairy tales um, being collected and written. There was a fascination for strong emotions. Uh, there was a sort of exotic take on nature, which you can see, especially if you look at the paintings from this time period. Uh, 
Uh, and there was also a great interest for history. So, for instance, Ivanhoe was published and is considered to be one of the first historical uh, uh, novels. So all these um, things lead up to uh, the first, what is often considered to be the first fantasy novel. The writer was called George MacDonald. He was a Scotsman uh, and he wrote a lot of books, but the one called Fantasties uh, was sort of, is sort of the one that's considered to be the first fantasy novel. So it's called Fantasties and it has a subtitle, which is a fairy romance for men and women. So that is sort of the new thing with this book, that it wasn't a fairy tale for children. It was meant to be read by adults. So that's sort of uh, a breaking point for us. Um, the next part, we're going to talk about the 20th century, Tolkien and onwards. See you then.